Hey, uh, today uh, someone request uh, to see uh, how I throw my bows step by step. So I want to show you uh, in one um, progress and then I will cut it open and see how the uh, inside look like. Okay, so I will use uh, three pieces of clay. This is around maybe uh, two pounds each one. So I'll do my first one. So centering. I'm bracing my uh, right arm here, right on the splash pen, and this is what my left hand do uh, without my right hand in the way. Okay, just to show you. So uh, using this portion and just push the clay. I'm pushing it through the center. Okay, from the top and push it down. This is my left hand. Okay, and then uh, my right hand. Okay, I'm curving, not curving my fingers, so curve. Um, this is what, while my left hand is doing, my right hand is doing this way. Okay. I'm using my fingertip, my right fingertip to adjust it. So this is my right hand, so I separate what my left hand and the right hand do. Okay, the left hand is kind of a, I usually don't want to um, press down and make it very flat. Sometimes if you flat the top and then you try to cone it up, you end up with a volcano there. So uh, usually I don't do that. Okay, I kind of push it down in a cone shape. This is what my left hand do. And most of the pressure is here. And the right hand is doing like this. While my left hand is pushing and both hand, I'm bracing my right arm here so the, the clay has nowhere to go. It's very easy to uh, get the sander. Right. And then after that, I usually use my right thumb. Okay, this is what my right thumb is doing to uh, drill a hole. Okay. So still breathing or the arm here, and then the right thumb is pushing it down. And you can use the left thumb to help to uh, support it maybe uh, help pushing it down. Okay, so that's the uh, for the small cup opening on the top. And then uh, you wanna keep on drilling until you get to the right thickness. Uh, I would say about maybe 3 8 to uh, half of an inch. Um, so I'm changing my position instead of using my right thumb. This time I'm gonna use my left fingertip and you're gonna form the fingertip naturally you don't want to kind of curve it in okay naturally using more of the pad of the the tip the fingertip the pad part pad portion and then drill it down this is my left hand okay drill it down but this hand is kind of loose without supporting it so actually this is what my right hand is doing okay hold it there and brace my arm there and connecting both hands together while I'm drilling it down. And in the meantime, I'm kind of uh, squeezing the wall okay, when I'm drilling it down. Until I find the uh, right thickness. Um, if you are not sure, uh, you can get a needle tool. Stop the wheel and get a needle tool and check it. I, 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 I know what the uh, thickness from my years of experience, so I don't need to check it. But if you're not sure, you do that. So once I reach the right thickness, and then I'm kind of spraying it, spraying it out my fingertips. Okay. From the very center, I slowly go out. But instead of making it flat, because I'm making a ball, so I'm actually making a little curve. And my right hand is still supporting it. So the inside has a nicer curve, okay. 
let me uh, cut it open so you know uh, what I mean. So you see that? That's the uh, inside look like when I'm uh, opening my right hand it's like holding like here and then a fingertip is going a little curve so making a little curve here okay so that's my first initial opening Right, ready to open again. Okay, now back to the same stage that I cut it open to show you. So the inside has a little curve and then um, from the curve I'm going to use my uh, inside finger go on the inside of the wall and then I uh, use my thumb okay basically thumb is grabbing the clay and then uh, slowly lift it up And uh, this is my left hand, okay? I'm showing using just one hand. It's super difficult to throw with one hand, okay? But just show you that what my left hand is doing. Pinch and then hold the wall and slowly raise it up. Slowly let go. Okay, so that's initial lifting since my thumb can reach to the very bottom this is what i'm doing a pinch and then raise the wall and while i'm doing that actually you want both hands to be very stable so actually when i'm doing it usually this is this is what i do okay when i'm pinching it my right hand is kind of supporting the thumb put it right there supporting it so when i'm pinch it the right hand is kind of supporting my left hand and the left hand is doing the pulling. And slowly go up. Okay. And still the, uh, the inside of the wall is still uh, uh, nice, but just a little bit more clay here. Okay. And then now after my initial pulling, uh, each time after you pull it up, you might want to compress the rim so the rim stays flat, stays level. And then <clears throat> I'm coming back here, but you see that my thumb is a bit short to reach the from the very bottom. But you still want to uh, try to pull the clay from the very bottom corner. Okay, so this time instead of using my right left thumb, I'm kind of replacing with my left thumb, extending. I use my left thumb, the right thumb to extend it so it's longer and both hands still grabbing the clay and then move it up. And making sure that it is slippery everywhere before you do that. Otherwise, uh, throwing ball, it's, you, you could create a lot of friction. Okay. So making sure that it's slippery before you move. So extend my thumb. Okay, I'm, this hand the left hand here is kind of slightly holding on the side of the wall and then uh, get my thumb attached to here so that uh, my thumb is more stable okay you don't want to do like that okay you just use the thumb that's too loose so usually stay with it okay stay with it 
and then extend it and then stretch and squeeze the wall and slowly lift it up. So I'm gonna start right in the middle to show you what the, ins the inside and outside hand looks like. Okay, start right in the middle. So this is my second step. So I I should, I told you that this curve here, I have a curve here, and my thumb start from this point, and then kind of gradually move up. See that? This is the thumb, and then the inside finger, and moving up. And I'm going to keep on pulling, but I just stop right in the middle to show you what is my fingers working there, and then move it up all the way. So, back to my first initial pulling, okay, I show you the separate hands, this time I'm going to put my both hands together to show you how I pull it up. Mm, Compressing the ring. Slippery. All right, so inside slippery and outside is easier. Okay. Both and extending my thumb and pull, squeeze it and pull. Compress the rim. the slip back to work and I'm gonna pull one more time and then uh, start to uh, shape it okay so keeping the, the foot since you are going to trim the foot smaller so I'm using my thumb to uh, squeeze it in so the foot is smaller Slippery again and then slippery enough. Okay. Slowly expand wider and making the shape too. So you have a more curve. 
um, compress the rim. All right, so that's pretty much that. that maybe a one, two, three, three poles, and that's enough for a ball. And then I'm start to uh, make the shape a bit nicer, especially for uh, a ball, you want to um, make it a very nice, nice curve. So usually I take care of the outside and using my metal rib, slightly bend it, okay, while I'm moving my fingers, so the inside hand and outside hands, like that, and I move it up. Right, so the outside curve has been taken care of. And uh, the important part for a ball, the important part is the uh, the inside curve. Because outside is adjust. Usually you don't trim the inside. You can trim if you really want it to, but normally uh, you don't want to trim the inside. So we're going to make an inside curve nice and smooth. Outside, you, when you are ready to trim, you can uh, turn it up. Uh, you can remove more clay or get make your uh, curve a bit nicer easily. So I'm using my wooden knife to kind of uh, remove extra clay from the corner. Wooden knife and then uh, my number ten pointy tool. To go undercut it and then remove it. Right, and then um, for uh, making the inside of the cup uh, nicer, uh, of course there are many many uh, different kind of uh, ribs to uh, take care of that. Uh, I have been showing you that. I have a three different size of uh, rib that uh, is gonna take care of the, uh, especially the inside, the very center point. Maybe uh, uh, one third from the center to the top, the one third. Usually that part is a little bit hard to uh, compress it, and uh, I've been uh, making design these three ribs to uh, take care of that part. Okay, and depending on the size of the bowl, uh, this size of a bowl. Uh, Maybe my medium, it's about four inches. We'll be able to take care of that. If you have smaller ball, then you can use a smaller rib to uh, to do to com compress that. So get the rib, and then uh, you wanna wet it. Okay, wet, make it wet, slippery, and uh, put your finger there. Okay, so that it doesn't slip the finger. Put the fingers in the hole, and uh, just. Hold it on the inside and then uh, you can go up from the very center point and slowly move it out. But first you want to compress the very center point and slowly move out. And uh, depending on how you hold your uh, rib, okay, my my rib, okay, this rib if you hold more uh, straight, you will have a smaller curve. But if you tip over, then your curve increase. Okay, so depending on what you want to make the uh, inside part, the the slope, uh, shallower ball or steeper ball, depending on uh, how you hold the, the rib to compress it. So maybe the very center point I'm holding more straight, but once I move it out to the side, I am kind of uh, holding more like sideways. And you don't need to go all the way. Since this part is easier, the, the top two-third part is easier to uh, take care of it by throwing it. So 
uh, basically this bowl is, is better for uh, compressing the very center point. Right, so that take care of that curve and uh, get use a sponge if you have a porcelain and remove that sleeve, extra sleeve off. Or if you uh, you are good at using the rib, okay, you can use actually use a rib to remove all the sponge mark or all, all the wood texture. Okay, if you're good at using the metal rib. So you can bend the rib and then then it's slide the curve and then start from the center point, but don't cross the very center point. And then uh, you just go uh, slowly move it up. I'm gonna do one more time. So this is the removing all the sleeve and making the uh, texture up from the wood go away. And then after that, all you need to do is compress in. Okay, this is the uh, chamois that uh, you just kind of fold it here and then put your both finger there and compress. And that's it. And if you want your rim a bit uh, narrow, you can actually squeeze it. So the rim, the the tip of the rim, is a bit narrow, it's narrow. So uh, the whole piece looks thinner, visually, looks thinner. So that's the uh, the ball demonstration, uh, uh, step by step. And uh, let me cut it open and see to show you the uh, inside. And uh, when usually you don't trim the inside of the ball, so you want to make it nice. So you can see that the inside of a curve after using the root to compress it. Okay. Start from the very center point and then gradually move out. Then tip over, okay, tip over and move out. And about uh, one third of that the very center point. You can use that to compress it. So the curve follow through nicely. Okay, and uh, the base here a bit thicker and a bit thicker and later on you could get to trim the foot, make the wall even from there. So you can cut this corner off when you are ready to trim. Okay, so hope this helped make it a nice ball.